Hi. Gerald <laughs> Finley, thanks for doing this with us today. Yeah, great, great. Let's get started. Uh, you're a Canadian who lives outside of the country now. What do you miss most about Canada when you're away? Uh, well, it's not the winter weather, that's for sure. Um, no, I think being a Canadian abroad, I mean, I miss my fellow countrymen, of course. My heart's always here. The work tends to be in Europe, but uh, no, lots of friendly faces and uh, wonderful colleagues who I miss over here. Now, Iago is one of the most complex characters in opera. How do you step into his shoes? Well, Iago, my gosh. My mother and other people are not so happy that I take on such a gloomy figure. Um, but I try and tell them that he's a character on stage, of course. You have to leave me off stage and bring, you know, a new villain to life on the stage. And that, well, you know, uh, I'd like to think he's not got too much of my own character. But what I have tried to do is read about psychopaths. Um, there's a really good test uh, called the psychopath test. Uh, by a Canadian guy actually called Robert Hare. He developed this 20 point uh, question to sort of see whether people were psychopaths. Anyway, it's a really good book by John Ronson uh, called The Psychopath Test and he examines why people behave so un, uh, unsympathetically. Um, and yeah, it's a really interesting thing. So I've taken a lot of uh, clues from that. Um, yeah, and just try to find, you know, what I find terrifying and scary and, and slightly bizarre. Yago is all of that. So I put on those shoes, um, but I take them off when I leave the stage. If you weren't an opera singer, what would you be? Oh, golly. Well, the wonderful thing about being an opera singer is that you can have all the fantasies of what you might have been uh, and play them out on stage. <laughs> Not villains, I have to say. <laughs> but, uh, oh, I don't know. Um, uh, I sang uh, Robert Oppenheimer, the inventor, co-inventor co of the atomic bomb, and that sort of got into my um, scientific background. I thought I might have been a veterinarian, and then I thought I might be an astronaut, as you do as a kid. Um, I might have been an air pilot. My uncle was an air pilot, and I love to fly, so, you know. So we've been telling people that singing Otello is a bit like scaling a mountain, and you've done some mountain climbing. Um, tell us quickly about that. Yeah, I've climbed Mount Kilimanjaro. Um, that happened about five years ago, actually just before I came here to the Canadian Opera to sing Falstaff. Uh, not a good thing to do when you're trying to put on weight, uh, mountain climbing is a, almost the biggest way to lose weight. You, you burn about six to 7,000 calories a day. Um, so it was a good, uh, a good way to have a quick diet. But um, the reason I did it, my two uh, wonderful boys uh, were growing into their adulthood. One was 18, the other 21. I thought, what's a dad and a couple of lads? What would be an adventure? And that was a, kind of a on my bucket list uh, to do something extraordinary like that. So I did, um, and, but I did it and raised some money for a musical charity uh, in the UK called Help Musicians. What is the first album you ever bought? The first album that I ever bought actually was um, a, a vocal group called The King's Singers. Um, I was a choir boy and I was in the church choir when I was growing up and had actually a lot of fun in that sort of environment and as a result um, got to know a lot of uh, kind of choral-y kind of things but the King Singers were a, almost a pop group as a result but they were trained you know church choristers. And what's the first concert you ever saw? Yeah that was the <laughs> I had been working on a farm and I had met uh, this is a, a very revealing. I had met um, a wonderful group of young farmers and I said that I could get tickets to the Beach Boys. And I went and bought some wonderful tickets to the Beach Boys in Ottawa 
And I said to my, my wonderful farm, farming, new farming friends, hey, I've got tickets. And they said, great. So I gave it to them, and for some reason they didn't invite me along. Anyway, I heard it from the outside the stadium, but uh, my farming friends really enjoyed it. <laughs> the best concert you never saw. The yeah, best concert I never saw. <laughs> Do you remember the first time you were paid to sing? Oh, I was paid as a choir boy. That was the big incentive uh, to show up for rehearsals. Yeah, it was only a dollar a week, but in those days, that was a lot. And how do you create moments of zen in your busy schedule? Yeah, uh, moments of zen, my gosh, it's really a question of uh, reading, um, going for walks in parks, um, and quiet moments, actually, before and after rehearsals. Um, that's normally the time. Opera singing is about being on your own a lot anyway. Um, and sometimes one would like very much to be with people a lot of the time, but sometimes there are those moments when you just want to be by yourself. Is there one food that you crave most often? <laughs> Chocolate's my go-to, absolutely. It's actually one of my habits, one of my great habits after a show or during a show is to have a chocolate brownie right there in my dressing room. So when I come off stage, yeah, some people like beer, some people like, I don't know, mine's a chocolate brownie. Excellent taste. Okay, we're gonna do some quick round questions now. Are you ready? Yeah. Gerald or Jerry? Oh, Jerry to colleagues, Gerald to all my uh, family and, and accountants. Star Wars or Star Trek? Oh, can't split it. I was a Star Trek fan and then I became a Star Wars fan. Apple or Android? Oh, Apple. <laughs> Lake or ocean? Yeah, uh, another tough one. Uh, my family has a lake and I love the serenity there. Nature is where it's at. Uh, but ocean, ooh, adventure. Dance floor or sidelines? Yeah, no, I'm, a get, I'm getting up there. Don't mind making a fool of myself. Sorry, kids. And here's a tough one. Art song or aria? That is a tough one. I mean, I started singing really uh, as a chorister. Art song was the next thing on it. Opera came afterwards. I think I've graduated to arias. Finally, what would you say to someone who's never been to the opera? Oh, you, you have to show up, you have to come, and you just have to let yourself go and experience the amazing, all-encompassing experience that it is. It'll, I think it always surprises people, um, and, there's, and there's something for everyone. <laughs>